I just got back from the cinema and I had to sit down and discuss this with you guys. So I watched the Oppenheimer movie, everybody's going crazy about it. So I thought it would be interesting to give you my views on it since it is very closely related to nuclear power and nuclear physics in general. If you haven't watched the movie already, you might want to click away and come back to this video when you have watched it. There might be some spoilers, so you have been advised. <laughs> Without further ado, let's get into it. So starting from the beginning, a movie is a very good uh, representation of uh, what happened at the times and uh, generally how the Manhattan Project developed. If you don't know what the Manhattan Project is, it's basically the project in the United States of America that uh, researched, worked and built the nuclear bombs that were dropped in Japan, Hiroshima and Nagasaki and generally developed the nuclear program in the USA. So firstly, let's discuss the difference between the theory and the experiment, which is something that we see quite early in the movie. It's basically the fact that Oppenheimer and the people who were working around him were mostly theoretical physicists, and those are the ones who develop nice theories, write in paper, mathematical equations that seem to work very, very nicely. But then when you want to implement that in reality and go to the experimental physicists and people who actually build things in the lab to prove the theories, sometimes things don't really go as you expected. Things you might not have expected happen or maybe your theory doesn't work altogether. So it is quite nice how they go to show both, both sides, sides of the physics and uh, the, theory, the theoretical aspect of it, how people do come up with all of these theories and use the math to develop all of these crazy ideas. But then again, you need to bring it down to reality and actually see if something that like that would be feasible in a laboratory or in real life applications or if you can even build something like this. Well, from this movie, we can see that they actually could build that. So <laughs> kudos to their theory. A second uh, interesting fact is uh, how they're showing a little bit the history of uh, the Los Alamos and how that national lab developed. Los Alamos is currently one of the three big national labs in the United States of America that deals with uh, nuclear research. Another one is Oak Ridge National Lab in uh, Tennessee. And uh, a third one is Argonne National Lab and there's also Idaho National Lab. So these four are actually the ones that are primarily now uh, doing nuclear research in the US, but Los Alamos was the one that uh, actually did start all of this Manhattan project and it was pretty much, as we saw in the movie, it was very interesting because it was built for that. So it was in the middle of nowhere and there was literally a whole city built for the purpose of attracting scientists in order to develop this kind of technology. So going a little bit more inside the movie, we see that uh, Oppenheimer has this idea of developing the nuclear bomb. However, there is another scientist who introduces the hydrogen bomb as an idea. The two of them are a little bit different. We have discussed them in the previous video and that hydrogen bomb is a more severe bomb, has a bigger explosion effect, therefore spreads the radioactive material much, much more and has a very big effect, let's say, compared to the nuclear bomb, which is already very severe in its own. We see that at first uh, Oppenheimer was against it, not quite sure why, maybe because of the ethical dilemma that was overtaking him throughout the movie. However, at the end, uh, with the fear of the Soviets and uh, all of that, he actually supported the research of the hydrogen bomb, but it's interesting how they do give out both of the of the information and generally it is nice how they go through concepts such as fusion, fission, the nuclear bomb, the hydrogen bomb. So it is a very good kind of understanding and also very visual for people to understand these kind of terms when it comes to nuclear technology. But now you might be thinking he was leading sort of something that looked like a cult group of scientists that were all so much for building these nuclear weapons without really understanding the severity and the extent of uh, the effects of those weapons themselves. As we saw, for example, when the weapons were detonated, no one was really in the movie talking about any radioactivity effects that the people suffered, any radiation marks, long-term effects, uh, cancer increase. And the reason why these things were not discussed in the movie is because back in the days these things were not really known. They didn't really know the severity and the extent of radiation to the environment and the humans. Therefore, it seems that they were a little bit more open about it, working with it, using it, exploding it on civilians. However, it is important to state, as we saw in the movie, that there were people that were very much against it. They advised very strongly against it. So it was a little bit of a split field at the time of people who were for it and people who were very much against it. So not all of the scientists were going crazy about it. A lot of them had concerns, but we saw 
even throughout the movie, the people who were for it, Oppenheimer as well, they actually started to second guess, second thing and uh, pretty much regret their decision of dropping uh, the bomb after they found out and they learned and they understood the consequences that that had. An interesting fact that uh, people might not really know is uh, that there were several cities that were targets for uh, detonating a nuclear bomb in Japan and one of them was Kyoto which was actually taken out of the list because of the significance in history and culture that the city possesses in Japan. So thankfully uh, they thought this much <laughs> to actually exclude this one. Uh, however, they did drop the bomb in Hiroshima and Nagasaki and uh, I actually had the chance to go and visit the Hiroshima, the A-bomb area, which is basically the region above which, a few meters above which the bomb was actually detonated, the building that was destroyed due to it, the memorial that they have and all of the things they have built basically around this tragic history that happened in their uh, city. What I found a little bit strange is the fact that they put so much effects and suspense on the testing which was the Trinity explosion which was the first ever testing in a, of a nuclear bomb ever in the world and uh, we saw how the scientists were so fascinated and a little bit scared at the same time with the scale of what they had created even though that was orders of magnitude less and less severe than the ones that they actually dropped in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. However what was strange for me is that we didn't see the drops of the actual bombs in the movie. Since this is a movie about the war, I would expect that the biggest wow factor in the movie would actually be the nuclear bombs themselves being dropped in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. We didn't see that. Perhaps because the director decided not to employ any CGI in the movie, so maybe that would be quite impossible to do otherwise. Uh, however, it was a little bit disappointing for me in that sense because that's exactly what I was expecting to see how they're going to show this and how they're going to explain all of the massive destruction that happened in these regions from this bombing. Of course another thing to consider is the fact that this is a Hollywood movie therefore perhaps it wouldn't be of so much interest to portray the very much negative act that the USA did in the days but try so much to keep it in the research aspect and a little bit of the positive side of the things that the US developed, which is typically what happens. Generally the project took around three years as I mentioned, 4,000 people and over two billion dollars to be developed and it is something that I think also might have clouded their decision making into actually deciding to drop the bomb, which happened quite late in the war and at the time that Japan was pretty much perhaps ready to surrender or in any case not posing any significant threat as it was in the beginning of the war. However, perhaps the how much invested they were in this project and the success they saw, especially after the Trinity test, it seems to me that um, they got caught up in their glory and uh, didn't actually have a really pragmatic reason as to why dropping the bomb. Oppenheimer tried to convince himself and I guess his consciousness and tried to sleep at night by saying that this bomb would basically stop all wars ever to happen in humankind because people will see the extent of nuclear weapons and be scared of it and never dare to have a war again. Well, we know that's not the case even nowadays. It was a fail in that sense and not really a particular strong motivation or reason as to why drop them. It seems more of a oh we build them, why not use them, see what happens. Which of course in this context is the worst possible decision you could have taken. All in all the movie is uh, a great movie to watch for people who are interested in nuclear energy and uh, since it does explain basic concepts such as fission, fusion and the like and it goes a little bit into depth about the history of the nuclear and how it was developed and perhaps shows a little bit why there is so much negative connotation about nuclear power nowadays even though we don't use it for proliferation reasons. However, what was interesting for me is the fact that this sort of movie with this sort of negative content did come out at a time that nuclear is uh, increasing again in use, countries decide to employ nuclear power again, build nuclear reactors, fund nuclear projects in order to develop the use of nuclear power for energy production for civilian purposes and uh, this kind of movie coming out at this time might a little bit hinder the development since uh, it does create quite some fear around the subject because this is a very devastating and hard 
issue and it is the biggest catastrophe that is a human made basically that we made by ourselves therefore i'm not sure if the timing is the best in order to portray this kind of message especially since there hasn't never really been a documentary or a movie that employs nuclear power in a positive aspect it's always negative association with nuclear uh, but this is my personal take on it all in all i would rate the movie a solid 9 out of 10 the cinematography was amazing the effects even the few that they employed were incredible the actors everything was pretty much as if you were living in the scenes and the fact that it was an imax uh, screen did help because everything as i said looked super realistic and uh, an incredible amount of work is evident that has been put into making out this movie so i definitely recommend for you to watch it and i would like to know what you think and let me know in the comments down below if you have watched it already and what you thought about it and what kind of rating would you give it like what you see what if i told you that there is something brewing behind the scenes that fuses science and style stay tuned for upcoming updates and surprises but shh this is our little secret for now. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on the bell notification icon and keep those inquisitive minds engaged. You never know what's around the corner. As always, it's been Elena, your friendly nuclear physicist, and until next time, see you soon.